everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez, and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Happy New Year, everyone. A new year means new resolutions and new projects. As one of our resolutions, we are working to provide new ways to help residents stay informed. So, the city has launched a new e-newsletter called KC Moore Snapshots. It's a digital newsletter that provides links to the newest videos, city news, and more straight to your email. To sign up, simply visit our website at kcmo.gov and search subscribe. Type in your email and select KC Moore Snapshots or any of our other email subscriptions to have the information you want sent directly to you. In 2017, you'll also see major progress on several high-profile city projects. Hundreds of blighted properties will be demolished this year as part of the city's $10 million commitment to remove blight and encourage redevelopment. The 18th and Vine area will soon see the first phase completed for the MLB Urban Youth Baseball Academy. This includes baseball and softball fields, a walking trail, and other amenities. Apartment projects continue throughout the Kansas City area, including new apartments at the Pickwick Building at 9th and McGee, Two Light near the Power and Light District, and the 122 Delaware Apartments, the largest passive structure in the world. Now, passive structures use 90% less energy than comparable buildings. New retail developments are also going up across the city, including the new Linwood Shopping Center, Whole Foods and other retail at 51st and Main and Brookside, the Commerce Tower redevelopment downtown as a vertical city, a Costco in the Northland, and a new Menards location at Highway 152. KCI is also getting new nonstop flights to Austin, Texas on Southwest Airlines starting in March, a new nine-gate departure lounge for Allegiant, American, Frontier, and Spirit Airlines in Terminal C, and 700 new seats with individual electrical outlets in the public pre-security areas of the terminals. Also, the Chiefs are in the playoffs, so City Hall is lit up in red. Go Chiefs, and what a great start to 2017. Now, on to more news from several city departments. In 2016, the Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund of the Office of Culture and Creative Services supported 152 activities. This amounts to over $1.5 million in support of one-time events or a series of events. Let's take a look at some of the exciting activities that are happening throughout the city. Hi, I'm Consuelo Cruz with Culture and Creative Services, and I'm at the Belvier Arts Center at 2100 Walnut in the Crossroads Arts District to tell you about another arts and cultural event that is supported by the Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund. Well, this year we have teams traveling from all throughout the Midwest region. Can you tell us how the festival got started? So it's called Neighbors Celebrating Neighbors. Thank you so much for talking to us today about the upcoming homes tour. Um, we want to bring awareness to everyone about the old homes in the neighborhood. Less than five months after this sewer main, which was built in 1925, suddenly collapsed over Brush Creek, flow is once again moving through a new pipe. On July 14th, Casey Water responded to a wastewater overflow near 4821 Chelsea Avenue. What workers found was a 72-inch sewer main broken apart in two places. Erosion of the creek could weaken the support on the north end of the aerial crossing. 
Workers were on site around the clock to stop the flow and begin bypass pumping. The overflow ended three days later. Immediately, Casey Water began working with Leith & Sons, a local contractor, to rebuild this nearly 100-year-old concrete arch sewer pipe as quickly as possible. An evaluation of the aerial sewer showed the entire structure should be replaced, and it was determined a new 72-inch steel pipe on concrete piers was the most cost-effective replacement. During the project, workers welded the seven pipe joints nine times on the inside and nine times on the outside. Unexpectedly, Hurricane Matthew pushed back the completion date. The storm delayed the manufacturing of the bearing plates in South Carolina. The project went beyond repairs. There's a new rock box. Here you can see workers in the snow pouring the concrete. This will help catch debris before it goes through the pipe. There's also added stabilization to help prevent erosion in the future. The final pipe segment was put in place December 3rd. Normal flow resumed December 14th. On dry days, this pipe carries millions of gallons of wastewater across Brush Creek, ultimately ending up at the Blue River Wastewater Treatment Plant. Uh, Richard Allen, uh, Park Planner, Kansas City Parks and Recreation Department. We're out here today on the dedication of Trolley Connector Trail. It's an important piece that will connect uh, the trolley track trail, any creek and blue river trails. Uh, this is about a half mile section of trail. Um, it's, we have a bridge that spans over the Indian Creek that is one of the longest pedestrian bridges in the Kansas City area, 330 feet long. Uh, it gives you views to the confluence of the Indian Creek and Blue River. And also what's neat about this segment of trail, it connects to eight miles of trail within the Kansas City metropolitan on the Kansas City, Missouri side and also connects to another 20 miles a trail over in Kansas and so essentially this connects two states, five cities and it'll extend all the way from this area out to Olathe and then to Minor Park. Uh, the trail is 10 foot wide. Uh, we were able to fund this through federal transportation grants with PIAC funds. Uh, this is a great addition. It's been a long-awaited missing link for the trail system in Kansas City. Beautiful fall day here in Kansas City for a very important uh, dedication of a trail. Thanks everybody for coming out. Uh, thanks United States Marine Corps for coming to join us this morning and uh, they're going to be helping us uh, dedicate this bridge and, and this trail. Here, we'll... We appreciate the support that the community has given us in giving us a dedicated sales tax that allows us to maintain and take care of these things. Uh, everything is going great in our system. These trails are coming online almost uh, weekly. Uh, we've got another dedication north later in the week, but I'm just pleased to be able to be a part of all of this as a commissioner, and I want to thank the staff and everybody who works diligently every day to make this happen, and with that I'll turn it back to Mark. Uh, this is a, uh, another uh, step uh, to keep uh, Kansas City moving forward. South Kansas City, we've invested a lot over the last five years in trails because we know it's something that families demand. And families are, are like uh, uh, shoppers in stores. They can choose to live in any city they want to. But we want to provide the amenities to make it family friendly in Kansas City. And I think uh, it, we just uh, saw a family coming down the trail with their young children and that was great to see. Uh, the uh, young boy mentioned his legs were tired from walking over the bridge, so uh, it's uh, everybody's getting exercise, so that's good. This has just uh, been one of the best uh, uh, dedications that I've been at in a long time. The energy that's here, the nature, the nature scenery, uh, the collaboration it took for us to make this happen. Um, you know, we use our PIAC dollars, and that's a one percent tax that uh, Kansas City residents pay and we're able to utilize it in district and so we can fund projects like this and so um, my, myself and my colleague Lee Barnes the fifth at large our PIAC reps Ruth uh, and uh, Ruth and uh, Edward Bell uh, we're very supportive of uh, this effort and we're going to continue it on there's talks of extending it to 85th and Prospect to tie into the trolley, trolley track trail further north. Uh, so we're just really excited about these multimodal forms of transportation throughout Kansas City. Uh, one of our challenges has been to complete the connections along the trails because we have a piece here and a piece there but we've had to connect the dots and this is one step closer to having a continual trail system. We've got one more spot, one more stretch we have to fund and once that's done and I hope we have the funding for this uh, next uh, city fiscal year, you'll be able to walk on this trail from, from the plaza 
clear to Olathe. And, and that will be a great amenity. We see so many people using it. What a phenomenal day. Hey, uh, I just wanted to say on behalf of the Marines, the Marine Corps IT Center, uh, thank you for coming out today. Thanks for letting us be a part of this. And thank you for all your efforts to make this happen. I know we're going to get a lot of use out of it, as well as a lot of other people around Kansas City. And things like this are just, just what we need uh, around here. There we go. <laughs> Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, here to give you a glimpse of some of the upcoming events taking place for your family at City Facilities during this winter season. Mark your calendars for the annual 2017 Mid-America RV Show coming to Bartle Hall January 12th through the 15th. The 2017 Mid-America RV Show is the largest consumer show dedicated to the RVing lifestyle and everything associated with it. RVing enthusiasts can check out the newest products and services on the market. Whether you're in the market for a motorhome, custom motor coach, or pop-up camper, you will find it at the Mid-America RV Show. For additional information, go to gsevents.com. Your outdoor adventure continues with four days of boating and outdoor fun at the Kansas City Boat and Sports Show from January 19th through January 22nd. Whether you're an avid outdoorsman or just looking for a way to escape winter for the day, this is your show. This annual four-day event turns Bartle Hall into a one-stop marketplace for outdoor fun with activities for all ages. For additional information, go to KansasCitySportsShow.com. Fans can celebrate baseball in a big league way at the Royals Fan Fest on Friday, January 27th and Saturday, January 28th at Kansas City Convention Center, Bartle Hall. Meet your favorite World Series team at the autograph sessions featuring current and former Royals. Enjoy the interactive games for fans of all ages, main stage programs, and more. A portion of the proceeds again benefit Royals Charities. For additional information, go to kansascity.royals.mlb.com. A spectacular new production of Andrew Lloyd Webber's The Phantom of the Opera will come to the Kansas City's Music Hall February 8th through February 19th as part of a brand new North American tour. Critics are raving about this breathtaking production is bigger and better than ever before. The beloved story and thrilling score with songs like Music of the Night, All I Ask of You, and Masquerade will be performed by a cast and orchestra of over 50, making this Phantom one of the largest productions on tour. Tickets for shows and events are available at the Municipal Auditorium Box Office or through Ticketmaster.com. These are just a few of the many events the Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities offers our community. To learn about even more events, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. I'm an old farmer and uh, this is an opportunity for me to clear my calendar. I don't have to take phone calls and I can just go out and plow and see how we're doing as a city and, and I enjoy doing this. It's a great way to spend my afternoon. I'm one of about 150 out, uh, folks right now out plowing uh, all the main drags and also all the residential streets. In Kansas City, Missouri, we have 6,600 lane miles of streets, so it's the equivalent of mowing, uh, plowing a two-lane road between Boston and San Diego. As you can see in the, in the residential neighborhoods and a lot of the urban core, you gotta go real slow because there's cars parked on both sides of the street. You can't take a big truck through here, you gotta go with the small residential pickups. 
which is we've got a three quarter ton pickup or a one ton pickup. We ask our residents to uh, be patient, slow down, uh, but the, most of the streets are in uh, good shape and the weather's cooperating. Enjoy the day, get out, and uh, if you see a plow, stay back so that uh, we don't get rock salt in a windshield or a piece of debris come off or a piece of ice come off a road and damage a vehicle. So give our plows plenty of room and we'll get her, we'll get her cleaned up for you. Are you an artist or involved in creative pursuits? Or do you lead an arts organization or a creative business? If so, we want to hear from you. The City of Kansas City, Missouri, Art Space Projects, and the Kansas City Economic Development Corporation have partnered up on an important market study that explores the potential of developing affordable live workspaces for the creative community. The study involves two surveys, one for individuals and one for organizations and creative businesses. So don't miss your chance to be heard. Participate in the survey today and spread the word. Go to kcartsurvey.org to participate today. In recognition of the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday on Monday, January 16th, City Hall and other city offices will be closed. Curbside trash and recycling pickup will shift to the holiday schedule, which means your pickup will be one day later than usual. For example, residents who usually have Monday collection will have that service on Tuesday, and residents who usually have Friday collection will receive it on Saturday. If you resolve to clean up around the house this year, the new South KCMO Recycling Center is now open. It's at 71 Highway and Red Bridge Road in the Ride KC Park and Ride commuter lot. The city's other two recycling centers are at Metro North Mall at 400 Northwest Berry Road in the northwest corner of the parking lot, and at the Environmental Campus at 4707 Doremus. The recycling centers are open Wednesday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. For a complete list of accepted materials, search recycling on our website at kcmo.gov. And don't forget, you can recycle your natural Christmas tree for free at any one of the city's three leaf and brush drop-off centers. You can go to 11660 North Main Street, 1815 North Choteau Trafficway and 10301 Raytown Road on Saturdays through January 14th. All trees must be free of lights, tinsel, and other decorations. Proof of residency is required, and be sure to visit kcmo.gov and search Leaf and Brush for more information. So old man winter has arrived, right? But by planning ahead, it's easy to stay safe. Just go to kcmo.gov and search snow. Our snow page has the latest information while a storm is happening. Plus, you will find lots of helpful information on things like snow policies, how to stay safe during cold weather, or even how to keep your pipes from freezing. We also answer frequently asked questions and show videos about snow phases and space heater safety tips. Remember that when it does snow, city crews will plow those roads, scrape the streets, following a one inch or more snowstorm. Please wait to call 311 to report missed streets until the day after snow stops falling. That will give crews a chance to make it through all of our neighborhoods. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, just go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel where you can view videos on demand. Thanks for watching and stay warm. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.